So, it has been quite a while since we did an actual video on Record of Ragnarok. It's been like, what, six months now? Every year. No, no, no it hasn't. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> well, allegedly it's been over a year and we left off right after Poseidon versus uh, that one guy. So... <laughs> What? What's his name? Uh, Sasaki. Good. <laughs> so, with that in mind, uh, obviously, we are now on to Jack versus Hercules, which, uh, power scaling wise, is probably one of the silliest matchups. This is going to be very, um, we know that people are going to have issues straight away when, when we're finished. Oh, yeah. This is going to be one of those ones where... It's it, going to be very... It, it's going to be like... It's, you're either going to like see where we're coming from or you're going to think this is complete another wank. Yeah, I know. There's not going to be much... There's not going to be a lot, a lot of avenues here to work with on this one. Now, this video does expect you to at least have seen the fight for yourself at some point. Uh, so, because we're not going to break down every single thing that happens in this fight. We're only going to be breaking down things that will be relevant for scaling or feats that are presented. Uh, some might be a little out of order due to us, you know, forgetting a couple of feats beforehand. But for the most part, these should be sort of in order to what we see up here. Uh, any further thoughts before we start looking at the scans? No, just, um, I guess we should just continue. All right. So, by any chance, did you, uh, did you set these up, like, in regards, or did we just break them down one by one, just, like, go keep going down? Uh, just go from number one all the way to the bottom, because it goes from the start of the fight. All right, so the first thing we mentioned here is Hercules completing the 12 labors. By itself, not that big of a deal. We do see he defeated with his bare hands. However, later on, this does play into his techniques, and we do see oh, the immense power we get this, this can also, like... So, should we talk about AP first for once? Because the 12 labors kind of helps in this regard. Yeah, we're just going to go, alright, well, I guess we're going straight into AP for, this is going to be the part that's going to make or break it for a lot of people, especially with uh, Jack. Yeah, let's rip, let's rip the band-aid off. So, going by the 12 labors, if you're familiar with, with Hercules' 12 labors, he has one where he literally holds the cosmos for Atlas. Oh, I completely forgot about that one. Yes, but this is just one of many uni potentially low multi things. We have. <laughs> yeah, I know. So the idea here is already at bare minimum. I can't mind this will be a weaker Hercules because he does get stronger. And, and keep in mind, um, no one has seen Hercules transformation, or if they have, it's a very rare occurrence. So there should be absolutely no reason. Or even any reason to assume he used his transformation state in any of the labors. I'm not sure if there's a statement given, but it's heavily implied he had to complete the 12 labors in order to gain the transformation to begin with. I, I think Ares does state, like, at some, like, when it's first introduced, that, like, as, like, a prize for gaining his 12 labors. Uh, if that's not here, we might have to, so I might have to fact check me on that one. Yeah, because I don't think it's talked about here too much. Yeah, yeah, no, but for the most part, yeah, so him holding up the sky would be in reference to the entire universe, unlike with regular Greek mythology, because we have Zeus' statements of being there when the universe was born, creating the universe potentially, depending on, like, you know, the scans and how you want to take them. But that's clearly a reference to the universe itself. And, again, holding up the heavens would include holding up the stars in the night sky, which would be holding up the universe. Pretty simple chain of logic here. Or even even at, like, the lowest. If you didn't want to give that 
as uni, that's at least multi-galaxy. And just in case someone's going to ask, like, how can we confirm it's the actual original labor and not something else? Record of Ragnarok, despite its, how, despite its, its liberties... It takes liberties, but it's also super literal. Yeah, because, like, apparently, like, Thor is stated to be a ginger in the original Norse mythology, but, like, in most cases, that's not really what you would depict Thor. So, things like that, like, they actually do stick very closely to the original source material for the character. Even Zeus has this as well with the Titanomachy, I think. Yes. Um, even, even regarding other characters, like, it goes... It, it does embellish some events, but it does, like, well and truly go into, like, the history of most of the characters. Yeah. So, that's just uh, some context for Hercules' labors. Key in mind that, again, this will be done in base form. Uh, not even Scotland's best could find out who Jack was. Um, actually, because we're still doing AP. You want to just go to the Zeus things? Uh, yeah, go go down to where um, Hercules and Ares start fight, fighting each other. All right, so I'm on seven. We'll start with seven. Ah, uh, yeah, stop. Yeah, stop from there. So, for context here, in Hercules' backstory, Hercules. Now, I know I said that you should probably have seen the fight by now, but just in case, we're we're gonna give basic context. In Hercules' backstory, we find out that Hercules drinks an item referred to as a brosa, which is stated to be it's the, blood the blood of Zeus, of and it's supposed to give you his power. Well, or his strength. It, it, there's also something else. If you are not strong enough or, like, what they would consider a true hero, the blood will just kill you. That is true. A lot of people actually, like, even, like, Ares doubted him right here. You see, like, fool, that was a punishment for those that covet, that covet divine power. So, no one was supposed to actually be able to drink it. Uh, Ares line confirms directly that it was sort of, like a joke reward or like a gag no one was actually supposed to be able to do this and hercules endurance which is his most defining character trait allowed him to do that uh we do have Ares stating that this is also zeus's strength as well and while it's not directly shown here we do have a panel that supports this where Ares, when looking at hercules for the first time uh after he gains the power sees zeus Instead, in his eyes, instead of Hercules. So this is very. So, be so before anyone tries to say like we're we're like wanking this, the series is trying to set up well truly that Hercules, at least in terms of like physical strength and AP, could be comparable to Zeus. Whether it's skinny Zeus or muscled Zeus, that's up for debate. Yeah. So. I think most I think most people and I think we're on agreement on this one. Uh, he would not scale to Adonis Zeus or Adam Adamas Zeus. Adamas. Adamas. No, I, no, because that's like a super rare <laughs> form. I, I I in good faith could not like say he, he he would scale to that. Yeah. So he is able to fight Ares to a stand to a standstill, and then Zeus himself steps in and stops the fight. Now, to be clear, by the time Zeus steps in, even though he does do it casually, they have been fighting for a while already at this point. So, and again, Hercules doesn't have his labors or anything to fall back on. So, there's a good chance they were kind of exhausted by this point. So, just because Zeus does this casually doesn't necessarily mean that Hercules himself is incomparable to, like, old man Zeus. Also, yeah. it, to, to get further along for, like, why having the strength of Zeus is impressive we kind of have to actually talk about Zeus himself and what Zeus can do. Yeah, we already mentioned this in the previous video, but we, we have some more, like, some scans here just to, like, reiterate. So... Um, th thanks to the anime and also thanks to the manga, um, we've got super blatant statements in both the sub-dubbed and the manga that Zeus can create... So, from, from the sub itself, he can... Hang on. Let me scroll down. He can... He can create anything on a whim out of nothing. And if he wants to, he can also return <coughs> it all. Yes, and that is similarly stated in the manga panel as well. Using the powers of creation as his own way of returning anything that doesn't sue his fancy back to the void. 
So the way Zeus is depicted in Record of Ragnarok is he only really uses physical strength. It's implied he has a weapon at the start, but he clearly doesn't need to rely on it the way Poseidon uh, does for his fight. And on top of that... Yeah, but... oh, go so un un unlike his three brothers, he's technically like the only odd one out. It, it is theorized that he does have a spear-like instrument that he uses, but from what we've seen depicted, it's more or less just physical strength. Yes. And then on top of that, to solidify this, like, scope being a little greater than, like, what the fight shows, in case someone's still wondering about that, we have Shiva. If, if, oh, uh, yeah, I was going to actually get to that as well. If people will try and say, like, well, everything out of nothing and return it all to nothing... That's good, but that doesn't indicate universal. In each iteration, whether it's the dub, the sub, or the manga panel, Shiva literally like states that if Zeus wanted to, he could destroy heaven. Yeah, no. So, and again, this also supports the fact that the way Zeus would do this potential feat would be through physical strength. So this would scale to Hercules. Granted, again, uh, this is stated during the Adamus form, but again, this is this is more to set up scaling. This is more to like set up the scope of Zeus' abilities. Because keep in mind that Zeus, in his old man form, presumably survived the Big Bang at somewhat well, close. We, can also, we uh, can also go a little bit further, where um, we have characters like Shiva, who are uh, said to be the most destructive of the gods, which means he's. If Zeus could do this with AP, um, <coughs> Eva should scale due to um, destructive capacity as well, which would also reverberate back to Hercules because old man Zeus, Zeus, in his old man form, he did like push down Shiva and was ready to like go without transforming. Yeah, so even as an old man, when Shiva got serious, Zeus, with one arm casually, was able to force him to his knees and basically, like, manhandle him, so to speak. This also goes for the fact that, like, Ragnarok likes to call its own universe, like, world in, like, the different worlds. Uh, this ties back to Shiva because he, as well, can create anything for fun and he can destroy the world on a, on a whim. Yeah, so definitely uh, that level of power, based on the lore context, uh, would not be too crazy, so it should scale to Hercules. Especially since, again, uh, Hercules does get stronger. Like, there is a line where I believe it's Loki tell, uh, is talking about Hercules' strength and mentions something along the lines of it, it would be troubling if he was just as powerful as Ares. But then, Lo Lo not Loki, uh, Hermes confirms that Ares could barely hold a candle to him. So, Hercules is way stronger than when he fought Ares, which is when he would already have the strength of Zeus, at least in his base form. Or, I guess, like, casual form, I guess is more accurate to say, because he doesn't really fully transform, he just muscle manipulates himself. The, the point is, is, he's gotten stronger since then, he already had the strength of Zeus at that point. So, we've basically come to the decision that there's an overwhelming amount of evidence that, at a bare minimum, if you want to go by statements, um, Hercules should be at least universal. So, but, depending on how you want to take the cosmology and how literal you want to take certain statements, you can argue for low multi. Yeah, uh... We'll talk about how this affects Jack as we go through the scans, but that's more or less where you could get them if you take the lore statements at full face value. Um, if you're not really into that, uh, we'll mention this now, but we'll probably mention it again during scans. City block to like building level. I, I, I don't know if building comes from building, city block. Building city block. Is it building city block? If you're going solely off what could, could be shown. Yeah. So that kind of range is where they would be at if you go strictly off physical feeds. Um, so should we like move on to speed? Something else that's very hard to like, like pin down. All right. Yeah. Sure. So right off the bat, 
Uh, he got the strength of Zeus. It's never confirmed he got the speed or the other attributes of Zeus. It's only confirmed he got the strength, so we would only attribute that to his AP. Speed is very difficult because there's actual no real speed feats like anywhere in their fight. Unlike with uh, the Poseidon fight where there's like some numbers thrown around for speed, nothing like that's present in the Hercules fight. So we can at least argue for anywhere from sub rel to massively fast and then like based on the fact that Ares can see both Zeus and Poseidon's attacks. Yes, uh, for well, all the gods cannot even glimpse them. Yes, for context here, uh, I asked uh, I asked one of the guys who calculates for us, Neo. Uh, according to him, moving this amount of time would give you zero point three three seven nine, I think, uh, sub rel speed. That's zero point three uh, times the speed of light. And Zeus has attacks that are faster than this. The Divine Axe is implied to be faster than this. And then when he does this attack, it's also much faster than it as well. We also have the anime, which both in the dub and the sub confirmed that his Meteor Jab is at least near light speed. Yes, and the Meteor Jab would occur before this punch and Divine Axe. So... If that's near light speed already, then these would for sure be light speed if you take the anime dub, or is it just the dub, or does sub have it too? Five. Okay, so if you take the anime's uh, translation here, because this is, this is a, uh, these are, these are uh, scanlations, so if you take the anime's more official standing translation, I think that's fair to claim, then it would for sure be light speed for Hercules and also Jack as well. Since Jack um, can react to him. At low, it, so basically, you can have them anywhere from sub rel to maxly fast and light plus, mostly because of Ares. Yes, uh, since you know Ares could keep up and fight Hercules, and they could fight at their base. And just to be clear as well, and he can, like he, he can view um, the speeds of Poseidon. Yes, just to keep in mind as well. Again, like. There isn't really anything lower you'd be able to reasonably scale them to, even if they don't fully demonstrate. Well, I'd say they kind of do to an extent. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to some more Jack's moves. But uh, yeah, no, for like uh, for sure they would at least be sub rel because for sure that attack would be in the sub rel range. But yeah, uh, either sub rel type of TL, they would not scale to the fist that surpasses time. That has a clear example of what it looks like, and it has a clear like naming scheme around it. There's no reason to assume that would scale to Hercules or Jack in their fight. So, you think we more or less covered most of the AP things here? Uh, yeah, we covered AP and speed. Alright. Um, so... Do you want to just go through the scans now one by one, or do you want to talk about the big elephant in the room about um, basically what we said? Before we go through the scans, what we'll do is, because we're done with Hercules, now let's talk about Jack. Yeah, so... Jack scales one-to-one. At least... No, I take that back. Uh, without the Voland, I don't think you could argue... Okay, so... Does... so I, I, I think it could be a little bit dubious, yeah. but it's durability that really matters. Yeah, uh, I don't know if the anime says the Volan enhances all physical stats. All I know, from what I recall, is that the Volan brings out your full potential. But... So, uh, if you go to 21... Alright. Um, we'll show that, like, this is Hercules after he transforms. Jack can take multiple hits from him. Yes. Even if and you want... Okay. For as much as people are really going to hate this, it's... Depending on where you scale Zeus, this kind of means Jack has anywhere between universal to low multi-durability. Yeah, no, he, he directly takes the punches head on. There's no debate on that one. He directly... And he takes more than these punches, if I recall correctly. He, like, I think at one point, Hercules also sla like slams him into a building. He hits there. him... So, he punches him multiple times, and he <coughs> hits him with a club. 
Yeah, so there's no debate on the table that Jack's durability does not scale to Hercules AP since he's able to take consistent blows from him. The only debate you can have is where Hercules scales and whether or not you would only give this to Jack with his Volin. But since that's all his, be... all, all, his Vol, all his Volin did was give him the ability to weaponize anything he touches. Yeah, so that's where it gets kind of weird because, like, we do see in later fights, like, uh, mentioning the Shiva a little bit. Uh, uh, Shiva's that, a that's, that's more of a that that that's more. I take that more of an individual like power set. Yeah, I was gonna point out that like even if you want to argue that the Volin enhances all their physical characteristics to that level, it kind of shows that the Volin does a specific thing and that's it in almost every encounter. Because again, with the sumo guy, he had to he had to have the Volin that's kick him in. Hard. I, yeah, yeah, the sumo guy. Fuck you. He had to have the uh, the Volin kick in in order to control his muscles effectively and fight at his full strength. That's what the Volin specifically did. That wasn't a byproduct of having a Volin. Uh, I'm sorry, something wrong, Kyle. Are you not are you not fond of how I refer to uh, Shima's opponent? No, you you do your thing now, Freva. <laughs> Fuck you! It still hurts. Yeah. But so for the most part there, Jack would scale. And again, speed-wise, Jack would scale. Uh, I don't know if Kyle has the direct scans here, but they do ha They do directly exchange blows with each other consistently. And Jack is able to close the gap and actually dodge attacks at close range. Uh, I do have that. I'm just trying to see whereabouts I have it. Even if you find that one a little iffy, he's able to throw knives at speeds that not only keep Hercules pinned down, depending on the situation, he is able to, like, actually get through his defenses and, like, pierce him directly with the knives he's throwing around. Granted, he does have to, like, mess around a little bit and, like, like do some angles with it, but the fact that, again, that, his, that the speed of his knives would be comparable to Hercules' own speed would still scale Jack to that as well. So, if you go to 11, I have... Uh, the panels where Jack reacts to Hercules. Okay, here we go. So we have a uh, face on me, that mighty Newman lion. Here he's bringing it down. Massive attack. And Jack is able to dodge the attack very easily. Although he does get knocked back, he does dodge the brunt of the attack. And again, there 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 are more showings of this during the final encounter when Jack grabs his shield and fights Hercules in close quarters combat. Um, so he would. Well, you you've also got a really good speed feat for Jack at the very start of the fight, yes. where he sets up all the like all these like traps, like hot wire and knife traps, and all he does is turn the corner. And even if you were to assume that it was the length of an actual street, at best, that's 100 meters. There are people who can run 100 meters in about 8 to 10 seconds. Yeah. And he set up all these elaborate traps and had enough time to make a cup of tea. So the cup of tea part's obviously a little silly. I don't think it's possible to make, like, unless that tea's cold as fuck. But yeah, no, so the point is that in a short span of time, he was able to pull off uh, this kind of, like, setup. And keep in mind, there are, like, there are at least 50 or something that, like, there's, like, at least 20 plus knives there. I'd say, like, probably around 50 to 100 range, but, like, obviously, I'm not going to... Probably count each individual knife probably isn't going to be very indicative of, like, the intent of this scene. It wouldn't really matter due to the fact of, like, how quickly he does it. Because even if you look at, at like, some of the panels, these ones are not in order. Um, they don't even... They, my estimation is that, like, they start at one end of the street. This is blatantly, like, they're near the end of the street. Yeah, so unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for the anime to confirm certain time frames and distances. Uh, I do believe Season 2 was confirmed. It was. So we'll have to wait for the anime to give us more context. But, like, even if... Again, like Kyle said, like let's say it's a full city block. He still set up a wire trap that deliberately sent several knives from above down instantly. 
Which is not going to be something you can quickly do, especially since he has to set this up around the buildings around him as well. Like, given the the, the elaborate, like, the false trap and the actual trap set up, those two alone could take a couple of minutes to set up for a normal person to do it properly. Well, I would say it'd probably take, like, to set up a trap like that, especially with the height difference and everything that he, the knives would have to be at for Jack not to... Or for no, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the ground one first. The one that's actually, like, connected to the buildings. <laughs> that, you're going to need a cherry picker or a fucking ladder. That's an, an, an easy hour job. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so, obviously, very fast. And, again, this was enough to catch Hercules off guard, who, again, should scale to people like Zeus's speed. So, yeah, uh, again, thankfully, like, if it wasn't for the fact that he did have direct combat scans, it'd be a little hard to, for, to argue for this outside, like, the throwing knives and stuff. But, yeah, so speed comparable. AP, uh, it's never been directly stated, but the way Record of Ragnarok treats the Voland is basically divine weapons negate durability. They don't the, the Okay, so they negate conventional durability... Mostly because of the gods, because the gods are, they, they just have several feats about, about being immune to all physical uh, weapons that aren't divine. I yeah. do have that. I, I know I have that yeah, scan yeah. on here. Yeah, mortal weapons cannot make a single mark upon the body of a god. So, yeah, no, the way it works in Record of Ragnarok is you need a divine weapon to kill a god, or you need to be physically as strong as a god or copy their techniques. It, it's a little weird sometimes with what can actually kill a god, but consistently you need a divine weapon or some level of, like, strength. Obviously not having your neck snapped. Fuck you. <laughs> that was done with the divine weapon! I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this right now. So yeah, her... And the, the fucked up part is, is that he doesn't scale to base Hercules. He scales to the strongest version of Hercules. <laughs> That's where it just gets more fucked. Like, so, oh, Jack the Ripper. Like, he's not a fighter or anything. Yeah, but he unironically has feats that put him above most other fighters. Well, I, I think the sad thing is that, like, he has the durability to tank, like, most of the people on the roster can give. I just don't know if he can give it back because I'm not sure if he has like I don't I can't like say that he has the exact same AP as Hercules. Yeah, it's definitely where it gets weird because like you want to say yeah they have the same AP, but then you're also like oh. like that that makes sense, that makes sense in your head and it makes sense w when you're saying it, but then you look at it and it's just like no. but. I, I like think he only, he only wins due to the fact that his gloves are what the divine weapon is. Well, to be fair, the gloves don't even count as a divine weapon. He has to turn his own blood into the divine weapon in order to pierce Hercules. Th that's where that's where I kind of believe that divine weapons just negate their ability because the humans are able to they're able to perform feats that they would normally obviously never be able to cut through these people, but. They can also do it without much resistance. Like Poseidon, when he got sliced up by Sasaki, his flesh wasn't tougher than a normal human's. He was, it was just like he was kind of a regular person. Like, so that's where I kind of think it does negate durability to an extent. But I guess you can just argue like maybe it's just like, just works against gods or something like that. It's weird. It is. But the point is that Jack, uh, Jack, that is the way he actually beats Hercules is by uh, coating his hands in blood and then stabbing Hercules directly. Again, Jack reacts to all of his techniques. Uh, so the actual, so stat wise, they're pretty like consistently together across the board, just outside so of AP. Yeah, outside of AP, everything else should be at least like similar. Yeah, so with that in mind, I guess like the last, I guess like for Hercules at least, one of the last things we're talking about for him is his endurance. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, it is revealed during the fight that if you if this tattoo grows even a millimeter, it would cause immense pain to any god, like to even like natural born gods. The thing is that Hercules doesn't make it grow a millimeter. It grows like over his entire body by the time the fight's done. And he never once... And it grows with each attack. 
Yeah, he never once complains about it, nor does he ever once, like, actually react to the pain that's going on through it. The only... The only time he ever reacts to pain... Actually, I don't even think he does react to pain. I think when his arm gets sliced off, I don't even think he yells when that happens. No, the, the only time he... The only time you could ever say he reacts to pain is when Jack stabs him through the midsection. Yeah, but for the most part, he doesn't really react to most types of pain in general. And this makes sense, but keep in mind that, like, if we're talking a battle of endurance here... Jack's got some pretty good feats taking Hercules hits consistently, but every day all the damage Jack is doing to Hercules is multiplied by who knows how much because Hercules is already in immense pain as a result of using this tattoo system or this tattoo ability, we'll call it. So on top of that, that's where the scaling chain goes there for the most part. Endurance goes to Hercules 100%. Uh, unfortunately, that is more or less... Like, uh, like, the only thing, like, worthy of note is that, like, when Hercules transforms, he can, he kind of, like, warps space, but aside from that, um, powers are either, like, super basic or not worth, like, mentioning. Yeah, a, a lot of his techniques here do the same thing, or they're not entirely different enough to justify talking about them individually. However... I guess, uh, so again, that's that's the stats. I guess there is something worth mentioning regarding Jack's Volan a little further. Uh, we mentioned it was his gloves could turn things into divine weapons. There is no size limit on that. Uh, anything he it's wants... What, it, it is whatever he touches. He, he demonstrates this when he touches Big Ben. Yes, and then Big Ben falls on uh, Hercules on, and like, does crush him. Yeah. So... There is no and then and then he proceeds to, if I remember correctly, he grabs the face of Big Ben and hurls it like a frisbee and cuts um and cuts Hercules' arm off. Yes, uh, unfortunately, you do not have that scam, but that does occur in the fight. So again, whatever he touches becomes my weapon. That being said, I will point out it's a little inconsistent how strong the divine weapons actually are. Because earlier on during the fight, he did turn his scissors into a divine weapon, but Hercules was able to shatter them with, like, two hits. So, uh, so the way I take it is... <coughs> think of it like an, like an extension. It might... It, it just... It, it, it gains the properties, just not the durability. I think that's fair to some extent, but then, like, later on, we see that with the well, parasite... It's, it, it's, yeah, it's the only way you can explain it, because... The only other time we we physically see a Volan get absolutely demolished is in the first fight with four. Well, it's not entirely true, is it? Doesn't Poseidon's uh, doesn't Poseidon cut the guy's sword in half? I guess he does, but that kind of like ties into Hearst's like two different personalities. That is true. Uh, the the point is that they seem more his weapons seem more fragile than your standard divine weapon. Unless we assume that Zeus could have also broken, like, a divine weapon in, like, one or two hits. But... Also, I... also the fact that, like, unlike every other person that we've seen in Ragnarok so far, Jack is the only one who's basically forced his partner to become the weapon. Yeah. What should we see over here? Uh, so this is due to Jack's... All the humans have a special ability. Again, if you see Record of Ragnarok, you would you like you would already know this. But Jax is probably the most useless one <laughs> in combat anyway. Well actually, no, it's just it's just useless in general, if I'm being honest. It's really it's really just an aesthetic one. Basically, what he can see is your soul's true nature. He can see your true emotions, your true feelings, he can see all that jazz. And Don't so basically, the I guess an easier way to put it is that, like, would you say that it's kind of like? Uh, so, do you remember the the younger Darby from Part Three? Okay, I know what you're it's gonna kind say, of like that, but like not as useful. Yeah, I was gonna say that's 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 a similar reading ability for sure. The only problem is that you can't ask questions to get answers, and. You can't get answers in general. You just get their feelings out of it. So you have to you have to assume you know what the fuck's going on there. 
Uh, again, like the the only thing this serves for uh, in regards to the series itself specifically is just the idea of Jack being like this broken individual who is like cursed to see people for what they really are. It's actually how they motivate his uh, murders in the, in the actual fight. But beyond that, it serves no real combative purpose. I mean, you could argue that maybe since he can see a person's soul that like he could see someone who's trying to hide, maybe, but I don't even think you could argue that since every time he sees a person's soul, he's looking directly at them. So not, not a very good ability, but Jack is a pretty skilled fighter on his own. Uh, I, think, I think something that we should point out is like, what would happen if this was the standard battlefield and Jack didn't get London? Okay, yeah, so... This is where it gets a little weird because Jack could take blows from Hercules, but a lot of the hits he gets off on Hercules are as a result of like tricking Hercules. But the only way he was able to trick him was because the city of London was in his way. It was like there to set up. So this kind of ties into the fact that like, so Brunhilde knew that um, Hercules would accept to having the arena turn into London. The problem with that is that, like, we can't call Jack's victory a true victory because he knew London like the back of his hand and he knew, like, which alleyways, which places to set up traps. He basically won from the moment London was chosen as the arena. Yeah, because even if you ignore the home field advantage for a moment, there's still so many places to hide his machinations and to set up his, like, ploys. And also, again, uh, his ability is to make anything he touches a wep- a divine weapon. You would only be able to hide that effectively in a city like London, where you can use all these random, like, objects to distract your opponent. If this were, like, the Baron Wasteland, the others, the other two, the other three, my bad, not two, fought before this point... He would have lost, presumably. Well, he wouldn't have been able to hop around or go anywhere. So he, he kind of would have just been, like, stuck and screwed. I mean, it's possible he would have been able to kill Hercules prior to Hercules activating his 12 labors, which, again, technically at that point, Jack would have the advantage. Oh, uh, at that point, you would just say Jack would win, but with, like, massively high difficulty. Yeah, but I think, like, a lot of people would agree that if this fight didn't take place in London, Hercules more than likely would have taken that. So, beyond that point, now that you understand the wonderful world of the Uni plus scaling of Jack, more or less, uh, again, whether or not that scales to his attacks with the Divine... (sighs) The Divine weapons are weird. If you assume they don't just ignore durability, then yeah, it should scale. If you do think it does, then it's, like, debatable where his AP scales. Other than, other than that, should we, like, give just, like, a brief overview of where we where we just, in general, have them? Yeah, sure. Um, well, okay, like, do you mean, like, for scaling purposes? Because uh, I think we've already provided yeah. evidence for, like, we'll what we're doing. scaling purposes, and then we'll, like, we'll, we'll do it, like, a new, like, a new, um, a new section of these videos where we give our, like, our opinions on the fight itself, but we'll do like the overall, like where we have them first. Uh, I think Hercules scaling is fine across the board. The light speed to UD plus scaling. I think that's fine. I think there's no real reason there to like disagree with that per se, especially, you know, with the anime dub saying something different on top of that. How? Oh no. So please don't send me, please don't send me a message. I might. Okay. Thank God. Continue. So, Basically, where, where I where I see him as of now, you can either have Hercules at either uni, or you can have him at low multi, depending on the like, depending on if you want to accept what statements you want to accept. At least uni to low multi, and at least sub rel to massively faster than light. Yeah. I think that scaling, that scaling chain is fine. Uh, I think the Uni stuff is pretty solid, especially if you do give Hercules his 12 labors where he held up the sky. I think at that point, you would just be like, you would be hard-pressed. 
the only way you could disagree with something like that, given how the, the lore works, would be if you're a feeds over statements kind of guy. But I feel like if you're a feeds to statements or kind of guy, Record of Ragnarok's probably not a series you should try and scale. No. It's a very, like, lore-heavy series that's more, like, tell, not show. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, again, same scaling would apply to Jack, with the exception of AP, since, again, whether or not you want to scale as AP there depends on where you want to scale the Volans. But beyond that point, uh, yeah, I, I think playing them in that range is fine. Uh, that would technically make them among the... I think that would probably make them, what, like, out of all the fights you've seen so far, you'd say, like, what, third or fourth Strong's group? Mm, I'd say... Hey, technically, yeah, about maybe maybe the third strongest. Because I was going to say, like, obviously Adam yeah. versus Zeus is one. Is Biden and Sasaki fans just weeping in the corner. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, very quickly on that one, before we talk about the fight and we thought about it. Uh, Hades is currently in the tournament. So, Poseidon might have a chance to get, like, upscaled. Maybe. But if his fight if his fight ends and nothing is said about him, <sighs> he just fades away into obscurity as like one of the gods <laughs> step up, even though he has the reputation of helping one of the stronger ones. Uh at this point it would really be appreciated if like even if the well, author himself was well, there's a guidebook coming out soon, so hopefully the guidebook like says they're all like comparable. It, I will jump at that. If it says they're comparable, I will fucking change my mind. But other than that, Poseidon's kind of like the odd one out. Point out right now, Poseidon's the weakest of the gods. Let's go. Well, we still got Apollo, so Apollo might like change the scaling for. Oh, like, like, I, I mean, the ones we've seen. We're um, rambling. I, I think we should move on yeah. to our thoughts of the fight. Yeah, um, I think I mentioned this before, very briefly. I, I'm not sure if it was on live stream or if it was, uh, on, I think it was on live stream. I thought the fight was really good, uh, at least in the manga. I thought the pacing was really well done. I'm curious to see how the anime is going to handle some of these uh, intersections, for sure. Because there's a lot of breathing room in this fight. And unfortunately, the anime doesn't like to take its time. <laughs> uh, you go to get well, Also, at the same time, like, we... If you've been with us long enough with when it comes to Ragnarok, you know our opinions on the anime. It's not that bad. Get over it, you fucking ninjas. <laughs> well, certainly not here to be friends. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to say it, then I'll move on. We could have had a 3D mess like Kane Ganashra, so fucking, like, cheer up, sunshine. <laughs> It's all like, hey, guys, 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 it could have been way worse. Oh, it really could. No, stop it. So, when I first initially read the fight, this might have just been because I was, like, with it weekly at this point. I thought it was, like, kind of slow, but, like, this is one of those fights when it was done. It's way better to binge it than when it was, like, weekly. Yeah, unfortunately, the tension moments are a little silly when the chapters end. So you can tell the like dramatic pause for the cliffhanger. Uh, I think the cliffhanger worked well for like Adam, but it didn't really work well in this one, at least for me. It really kind of felt like at this point, like you really should wait for the entire thing to fit the entire fight to finish before you come watch it. I will say. I will say that. I'll say that, like. I, I do appreciate that this fight felt like it was anyone's gamble. Yes, they did a good job juggling it back and forth up until the very end. That is for sure, especially since they made Hercules uh, a likable god. Whereas with like Poseidon, for example, he was kind of boring. I don't know how many people actually are going to sit there and say Poseidon was their favorite record of Ragnarok character. <laughs> I, I, I'm just being real here, like... Uh, are, you me you, are you telling me you don't like his shining personality? <laughs> Kyle, I need you to stop looking at his chest for a minute. <laughs> but now, uh... I'm sorry, but he wears... I'm sorry. 
her outfit. Kyle, no. Yeah, but he's stripping uniform. <laughs> but, like, so the, the point here is, that, like, the characters are really nice here. Jack, the, the interpretation of Jack the Ripper, uh, Record of Ragnarok has these very liberal interpretations of characters, but Jack the Ripper was... Uh, I don't want to say he was the craziest interpretation, but he was a really nice uh, Jack the Ripper characterization, or Jack the Ripper personification, we'll say. Although I don't really think he sells the whole worst of humanity all that well, especially when you find out that by the end of it, he's basically just a broken victim. Yeah, you basically just find out that he's a, he's a victim of circumstance, and he's basically a broken man who's, who was, who's just gone his entire life. And when he showed one ounce of kindness from a god, he basically, like, turns around. Yeah, uh, everyone seems to like him better, but, well, okay, not the humans, but the, at least, like, Hercules did. And then later on, uh, a bit of a spoiler, but it's, like, a brief cameo. Uh, later on, we do see he's hanging out with the Valkyrie that he did enslave, and they're just casually eating tea with, like, muffins together. So, like, clearly... Uh -huh. I think that speaks more for Hercules' character, the fact that, like, he was able to see f see through, like, he, he saw through the mist and he saw Jack for who, who he truly was. Yeah, I know. Like, the, the author did a good job saying that the characterizations here, of, like, the... the uh, That's actually one of the major, like, moments of the fight is that Jack's trying to get him to feel despair and fear, and Hercules is like, nah. You're not going to make me feel fear, because the only thing I fear is losing justice. And no, by the end of it, his, his cover never changes. He never feels fear. Which is very yeah, impressive, because... Like, you kind of see... You, you kind of see it part way through the fight, where hopefully stops hating Jack and starts to pity him. Yeah, so after a while, as the fight progresses... Because for context, Hercules hated the idea of fighting Jack because he wanted to fight an honorable warrior. Which... He didn't want to fight a criminal, even though, even though this might be like a hot take. Oh. Jack's not the best criminal that ever existed. No, no, no. I, I, I think like if we're he's being one hundred percent infamous, but he's not the worst. Yeah, no. That that that's kind of why I, I did bring up the fact that like the whole darkness of humanity, the void, whatever that they tried to work with. Like it, if they're gonna do that. If they're gonna go that route, you could have gone with evil, like maybe Pol Pot, whatever, whoever the fuck that is. I I don't know who that is. Oh my fucking god! Read a history book. I have, but they're all American. Oh my fucking god! Read something that isn't America. Uh, I think I'm touching. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um. I will say for me the one weak part about it is Jack never talks to the uh, to his mother's friend. So during Jack's flashback, there's a whore who I don't think we ever I don't think she's ever named, but she's like the only person besides his. She's like the only person who's genuinely kind to Jack. The thing is though, is Jack doesn't awaken his power as far as as far as I remember until after his mom kind of like betrays him, and then he just it's kills. Yeah, it's after she basically goes on a tirade of why she kept him and then it awakens. Yeah, so I, I don't really like the fact because she shows up in the bleachers and she defends Jack and she still clearly cares about him. So one of the things I wasn't really like, one of the things I didn't really like is that that, that plot line has no resolution. Like, Jack never encounters her again. Jack never even talks. Like, they don't talk to each other. Jack doesn't look at her for a minute. It's like, oh, you have his color or something. No, uh, like that that moment never occurs, which I feel like I don't know if the author just didn't care enough to finish it or if there was a rush going on, but he clearly set something up. Or I don't know who writes record of Ragnarok, so I'm just using whatever like the first one that comes to my mind. Uh, the point is that there was a lot of setup there, and there was no payoff. That that's the point I'm trying to get at here, and I think that was like the one part I I, I like disliked about this fight. Because a lot of the fights go off emotional payoff. And there is emotional payoff in this one to an extent with between Jack and Hercules specifically. But again, that's set up. Example, I think a good example of emotional payoff are like the next two fights coming up. Yes. 
Okay, so the next one for sure, next one, if I recall correctly, is going to be the Shiva fight, right? Uh, yeah. versus Raiden. Ah, uh, yes, the sumo wrestler. Uh, that one's fair. Uh, I think we're gonna have a, a I think we're gonna have a slight disagreement on how it's handled with the one after though. But the next one will be Shiva, Shiva versus Raiden. Um, yeah, no. So that's more or less it. The, again, like it's, it's a really good fight. Uh, it's not my favorite, but I think like of all the fights I've seen so far, it's probably either number two or I'd number say, three. I'd say it's a solid like eight out of ten fight. I'd, I'd say I'd say yeah, ten's fair, yeah. Uh, cause if, I, um, if the payoff for Jack like worked better, I'd probably like bump it up to a nine. Uh, Jack does have some more reappear reappearing scenes, like I mentioned. He does have more than one cameo going forward. However, uh, since that's not relevant to this fight, I don't really think like we should bring that up. That's more of like like a spoiler. It doesn't need to be said. But he does like have more payoffs. Or he does not pay off, but he does have more scenes later on where you do get to see him interact with other characters. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that should that should cover it for the moment. All right. So that's going to be it for this Record of Ragnarok video. Hopefully the next one doesn't come out in another fucking year. <laughs> with that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for your time as always. Have a nice day. And I'll see you guys on the next streamer video. Take care, everybody.